Carl noticed that his relationship with his wife Wendy had changed drastically and their quarrels were growing louder and stronger. So he hired a private investigator. Yes, it wasn't cheap, but he did his job in a highly professional manner and after two days, Carl was already listening to a recording of a conversation between Wendy and her lover. It turned out that it was her colleague. From the conversation, Carl found out that they had been together many times before and were going to meet again at the hotel this Friday. On Thursday evening, Wendy told her husband that she was going out with her girlfriends on Friday, so she would be late. Carl already knew by this time that her lover was married, and thanks to the detective, he knew his wife's name and his phone number. He contacted Martha and told her everything. The deceived wife became very upset, and then they decided to follow them and catch them cheating. On Friday night, they rented a car and waited outside the office where the couple worked. Wendy and her lover walked out of the building and got into the car that Carl had given her for her birthday. Martha, who could not believe in the end that her husband had been cheating on her, suddenly burst into tears. Carl asked her not to cry and not to get upset, but to get furious. Then he started the engine and drove after the lovers. They arrived at a cheap hotel near the airport. The deceived couple waited for a while and then followed the cheaters to their room. When they arrived at the door, Carl pretended to be a security guard and demanded that they open the door. A man came out of the room with only a towel around his waist. When he saw his wife behind the stranger's back, his face froze in mute horror. But then Carl, seeing Wendy on the bed under the blanket, became furious and grabbed her lover and dragged him outside, throwing him into a snowdrift. He left him and Martha to deal with each other and returned to the room. Wendy frantically dressed herself, muttering some sort of apology. Carl sat down in a chair and told her that he had videotaped the whole thing and that it was a shame. He immediately called her father and told him everything. Wendy threw herself on her knees, begging for forgiveness, but Carl was so angry that he also called her boss and informed him what his employees were doing in their spare time. Then he called a cab and sent the woman to her sister's house. Meanwhile, he returned home and packed up the woman's belongings, which he took later to her sister's house. A week passed. The wife and her lover were fired for violating company rules. Wendy tried to call Carl several times, but he would not pick up. A few weeks later, her sister called and told him that her Wendy had suffered a serious nervous breakdown. She was now in a hospital and was anxious to see her husband. They met a week later. Wendy looked gaunt and depressed, like a shadow of the previous Wendy. She tried to apologize, but at the same time, she blamed her husband for everything. He was the one who allegedly worked too hard and didn't give her enough attention. But Carl was quick to remind her that she herself wanted to live well and not deny herself anything. They were silent for a while, not knowing what to talk about next. Then Carl said he could no longer live with her and wanted a divorce. So Wendy was left with nothing. Her parents were angry at her, she was fired from her job, and her husband was about to get a divorce. She begged him not to leave her, but Carl wished her luck and left. A month after that awful scene at the hotel, Carl called Martha and invited her to visit. Unexpectedly, she said yes. After dinner and small talk, 
Carl suddenly said jokingly that they should become lovers too. Martha laughed and said she would, but not in that lousy hotel. When Wendy found out, she was hurt, but she knew she deserved it. She was still waiting for Carl to come back, but it was never going to happen.